He called it Warden Glyph. It was comprised of a laboratory and power plant. Adjacent to it was a tremendous 187-foot tower. Power from the plant was sent to a giant Tesla coil in the tower. Underneath the tower, the inventor sank huge shafts 120 feet into the soil to transmit the electrical current into the earth. This was to be the first of many transmitters in a system that would encircle the world with wireless energy. The vast amounts of electricity necessary would come from huge hydroelectric projects. A lot of people thought it was crazy because they couldn't understand what he was seeing and what he was envisioning for the future. He was able to conceive of things that other people weren't. He was a visionary. But even visionaries need money. So in order to convince industrialist J.P. Morgan to invest $150,000 to build Wardenclyffe, Tesla promised the financier the tower would make millions by also broadcasting messages, news, music, and even pictures to any part of the world. This is the original foundation for Tesla's tower. If you look, you can see that it's an eight-sided figure. It had a huge hole down in the ground right in front of where I'm standing, 120 feet down, and a spiral staircase went around it, and then up into the sky. 187 feet was the tower. The tower was attached by huge timbers on bars like this at each of the points along the side foundation walls. It loomed over everything in the area. It was overwhelming when you think of the size and scope of such a huge, huge construction. This is the actual lab and power plant at Wardenclyffe, where Tesla worked for more than four years, trying to develop his wireless concept. It was purchased by a photographic company more than 60 years ago. After remodeling, only a part of the outside lab remains. Really getting to go inside, this is All so right, exciting. This door hasn't been open in a while. Although the building hasn't been used in more than a decade, the owners agreed to open the doors to Modern Marvels for a rare look inside. Wow. Oh, this is incredible. This is amazing to be in here where Tesla worked, where he spent time with his assistants. It's just amazing that over 100 years ago, Tesla was walking in these very walls. His equipment he was here. His dreams were alive. He was looking forward to what he hoped would be a very glorious future. In part, it was timing that ultimately doomed Wardenclyffe. On December 12, 1901, as Tesla was working at his wireless network, Guglielmo Marconi beat him to the punch and successfully transmitted a radio signal across the Atlantic. While Marconi's achievement was indeed a first, in reality, he used 17 of Tesla's patents to accomplish this feat. Tesla was not only forgotten as the father of radio, Marconi's transmission sealed the fate of Wardenclyffe. Morgan was no longer interested in supporting Tesla's work here. Marconi already did it. Why should he keep supporting Tesla? And of course, Tesla's plan was greater than Morgan knew. Tesla could see reason to continue the funding and continue the work, but it wasn't Morgan's plan. So in 1905, while still under construction and after some amazing electrical displays, the Wardenclyffe project was abandoned and later destroyed. The world was not prepared for it. It was too far ahead of its time. But the same laws will prevail in the end and make it a triumphal success. Nikola Tesla. But could Tesla have succeeded? The mainstream scientific community has grave doubts. Tesla's schemes for worldwide electrification was simply out of the question. It makes no sense from the standpoint of the energy involved and the inefficiency of it. Still, some aren't sure. I believe that the wireless transmission of power is possible. The chance that power could be transmitted around the globe without wires was too great a discovery to pass up. Jeff Parisi, a high-voltage technician from KVA Effects in Signal Hill, California, 
was part of a team that built the largest Tesla coil in modern times, the 13M. The reason the 13M was built was to give scientists the opportunity to actually investigate some of Tesla's wireless transmission theories to see if they're practical. The 13M generates close to 12 million volts of power. In 1998, the team tested the giant Tesla coil. What we learned is that the machine we built is not large enough. It's actually a quarter scale version of what Tesla made in Colorado Springs. And it seems a machine that large is really necessary. We hope in the future that we'll have the funding to be able to build a full scale Tesla coil and prove his theories. How can it be that a century after the failure of Wardenclyffe, Tesla's ideas are still so passionately considered? Perhaps it's because long before Wardenclyffe, Tesla had already changed the world. On June 21, 1943, the United States Supreme Court reversed itself, granting patent rights to Tesla, not Marconi, for the invention of radio. Mad Electricity will return on Modern Marvels. We now return to Mad Electricity on Modern Marvels. Today, we take our electrified world for granted. Energy that powers our needs is as close as the nearest outlet. According to legend, the man who made it happen was born in Croatia in 1856, at the stroke of midnight, during an electrical storm. Tesla is immediately associated with thunder and lightning, with electricity. Tesla began his career as an electrical engineer with a telephone company in Budapest in 1881. One day, as he was walking through a park with a friend, Tesla suddenly envisioned a groundbreaking concept for a new electric motor and drew it out in the dirt. This simple illustration became the patent for the induction motor, which would go on to be the standard electric motor for the world. It's used for everything, from tools and appliances, to hybrid cars, to industrial plants. The induction motor works by energizing coils of wire placed around a stationary frame, called a stator. This induces the current in the coils onto a rotor. The alternating current in the coils causes the poles of the magnetic fields around them to change between north and south. The resulting attraction and repulsion with the coils as they alternate causes the rotor to spin. And the exact same ideas that Nikola Tesla came up with 100 years ago are still used today in induction motors such as this one. The motor is made of two parts, the rotor and the coil. Within the coil, a north-south magnetic field rotates. And as a magnetic field rotates, the rotor follows it. Just like it did 100 years ago when Nikola Tesla made the first prototype. In 1884, at age 28, Tesla moved to America with little money and only a letter of recommendation from his boss to Thomas Edison. The letter simply read, I know two great men, and you are one of them. This young man is the other. Edison hired the brilliant young engineer and eventually asked him to redesign his company's electric generators for a $50,000 bonus. After Tesla developed a number of enormously profitable new patents, he asked Edison for his bonus. Edison says, you gotta be kidding me. You got a lot to learn about an American sense of humor and he doesn't give him the $50,000. Tesla turns around immediately and says, well, Mr. Edison, I resign. So began a lifelong feud between the upstart young genius and the established inventor. Tesla leaves Edison's, and he was digging ditches in New York City for a 